Bon Viveur by Norton and Wilson, because life is meant to be enjoyed. Thank you to everybody who took part in the recent demonstration of support for my new regime as leader of FRAGCOM in our newly named capital city, Smelingrad. Also, we are very happy to announce the appointment of our new Minister of Justice, Alexander Alisikov. Please remember, we're watching you. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the show. So today, it's another episode of My Most Loved Fragrances. So uh, regular viewers of the program will know that we've been doing this series for a few months now. We've had some absolutely great guests from all kinds of different walks of life, uh, mainly fragrance-related people. Uh, of talking about their five most uh, cherished fragrances, but sometimes we're grabbing people from slightly different spheres, and that is very much the case today with a wonderful guest. So here we have the the lady behind Zen Body Living, and also the Conversations from Here podcast, Dana mm -hmm. Ziegler. Hello. Hello. Hi, Dan. How are you? Yeah, I'm great, thank you. How are you? I'm very well, and uh, Jack the Cat and I are uh, are and are uh, looking forward to this and looking forward yeah. to it all week. It's, I, likewise, I think it's going to be very exciting to talk to you. And yeah, the cats looks very much at peace there. <laughs> and uh, so just to introduce you to the viewers, uh, it's going to be difficult because you have many different uh, strings to your bow. But uh, yeah. basically, uh, the reason that I got to talk to Dana was that I was very lucky to appear on her podcast, which is called Conversations from Here, which I will link in the description. You can find my episode and a load of other episodes with really interesting people. So uh, let's just kick off with that. You're, I know you're based in uh, California. Los, no, hang on. Yes, Los, Los Angeles. <laughs> Los Angeles. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So you're based in a lovely part of the world and uh, kind of the showbiz capital you know in the showbiz kind of area for the the capital of showbiz for the whole world really so it's gonna be very interesting to find out a little bit more about you uh but the, just give us a brief synopsis of what is the conversations from here podcast all about generally so the conversations from here podcast is kind of designed to uh create in, uh, inspired intelligent conversation about how one gets from their or origination point to where they are now. In other words, how, how someone came to be themselves. So I know a lot of really interesting people who do a myriad of different things. And I'm always fascinated by those who are madly in love with the work that they do. And, uh, and, and during this COVID time, when we were all shut down, right, we were all locked away in our, in our houses last year, um, I wanted to create content that would inspire people to, um, cause a lot of people were in the process of remaking and recalibrating their work lives. Right. So mm -hmm. uh, I wanted this to be, um, to be inspiration in that arena. So okay. that's the, that's the genesis of conversations from here. Okay, brilliant. So it's a very universally interesting subject for anyone, really. So uh, guys, do go and check out the podcast, and uh, it's yeah, highly recommended. I was very privileged to be a guest, and uh, you can obviously hear a bit more about me if you're actually interested in that episode, and some very interesting uh, hot topics in, in about to do with fragrance community stuff. Also, then, the other big thing that, that you do is uh, Zen Body Living. Indeed. So can you just explain what that's all about, please? Sure. So I am a certified health coach and a certified yoga teacher, and I also teach meditation and mindfulness, pra uh, practical skills for every day. And so anybody who's looking to uh, to have a more balanced, um, saner life, perhaps, uh, maybe they need to, they maybe they need some help rearranging their priorities whether it has to do with exercise, whether it has to do with diet, whether it has to do with um, their, uh, their physical environment in which they live or work, um, I'm, your, I'm your person. Great, and the, we can uh, link the right place to go for people if, if they're interested to find out about that side of what you do. Yeah? Yes. Okay, great, and can you help people even if they're not local to you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, that was one of the one of the blessings, if one can say that there were blessings from last year, which is that many of us are, are working remotely. So I can I can connect with anybody anywhere. Right. OK. Uh, brilliant. So, guys, yeah, the, both the links for those things are in the description. I mean, I I'm so not Zen body living. I'm so <laughs> not mindful or meditating at all. I'm just completely 
winging my life with no guiding philosophy. So <laughs> I, I definitely, I'm going to look into it a little bit more. I've tried a few things over the years to kind of get into this, you know, thinking a little bit more mindfully about the way you live your life. But um, I think I've got massive issues that I'm hugely resistant to this. So. Well, I'm telling you, Dan, small changes consistently applied. That's a secret. Okay, so I'll, I'm going to look into it. All right. So, of course, we're, we're kind of here to talk about fragrances and we're going to find out a bit about, about you in general as well as we do that. So uh, you are interested in fragrances uh, a bit more than the average person because you yes. watch all the YouTube videos, even even my little channel. So you, that definitely tells me that you've got quite a strong interest in fragrances. So can you tell me uh, how did you become inordinately interested in fragrances? Well, a couple of things. One is I, I was kind of a closet frag head as a child, and my mom and I used to be, uh, you know, always sniffing this or that, whether it be in magazine inserts or at the store or whatever, and I always had an interest in scent. And, and also, I must say that many commercial scents I can't stand, so the things that I prefer are highly curated. Um, I don't go for the random thing. Um, and, uh, and uh, a little bit more recently, I would say probably, well, gosh, um, maybe the mid-aughts, um, early to mid-aughts, I ventured into uh, using natural essences to create perfume. So I was learning a bit about the craft whilst creating my own scents for, for friends. And uh, that, that, that was kind of, uh, and, and I did find, it was so interesting because working with scent activates your brain in a way that nothing else does. And, and we talked on, uh, on the episode of the podcast, Conversations From Here, that we did, we talked about how scent evokes memory and evokes memories of experience. And uh, so I've always just been fascinated by that. Um, and also I'm a history buff. So um, that's another thing um, that and I'm fascinated, not only the history of the various houses, but also the history of perfumery in general, um, just pretty darn interesting. Brilliant. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And yeah, it's, it's such a, an untapped sense maybe for a lot of people. And I think a lot of people, when they do get into the hobby, it, it genuinely does enrich their life in a really mm -hmm. kind of nice way. It, it gives them this whole different dimension that a lot of people, yeah, we tend to focus on buying physical things and eating and drinking and stuff. But th right. this idea of smelling stuff and, you know, I know people who, you know, love to sit there with all these samples and try stuff and it enriches people's lives in a really really nice way so it's a lovely lovely hobby okay so we shall dive in then uh, no rules really about the fragrances you select so which one have you decided to bring to our attention first please all right so i have uh my coveted five and uh these i must say that these are the top five fragrances of the recent age, shall we say, um, okay. because who knows, I, I might come across something that usurps one or several of these, I don't know, but uh, I discovered one last year, um, this is called Henry Rose, um, it was developed by Michelle Pfeiffer, the actress, oh. and, uh, and her team of perfumers, and she was looking for she wanted to create a fragrance line that was uh, what, what they refer to as clean fragrance. So it has its chemical makeup. They use both natural essences and artificial ones that are less toxic as some of the more commercial mm -hmm. perfumes are. Um, no estrogen disruptors or what have you in right. this. Right, yep, yep. Um, so I, that was, you know, partly an attractive thing. Um, it is something that would as uh, oh, so this particular scent is called Torn. Um, there's right, a whole so different ones. The, yes. the brand name is Henry Rose. Henry Rose, named um, after children. Yes. Um, so this one, you okay. might you might get a sense of cantaloupe, which might kind of put you off a little bit because it's 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 a strange way to 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 uh, enter a scent. But um, the notes on this one are freesia, lily of the valley. So there's a there's a sweetness on the top. Rose, violet, jasmine. Then there's a base of sandalwood, musk, patchouli, vanilla bean, and praline. So it's not it's not hugely complex like something that, say, Guerlain would make. Um, mm -hmm. But it is uh, it is a a cozy night in with a plate of cookies and your favorite blanket in front of the fire. 
um, while drinking a vanilla chai. That's kind of the sense that you get. It's it's. Um, I would say that it that it uh, jumps into the gourmand category yeah. because it's, it's a, mm, there's a sort of yumminess about it. Um, very vanilla-y, sweet. It's unisex, um, so anybody can wear it. Um, the entire fragrance line is unisex, technically. Um, yeah. I say that it's Oprah in a bottle. Oh because, right, okay. Because it's 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 not objectionable in any way. And I know that there are some frag heads out there who might be a little bit snobbish about that, because given that this is a this is a scent that it doesn't evolve. It doesn't mm -hmm. really have a um, you know, peaks and valleys in its life yeah. cycle, but it's just damned good stuff. It's just very delicious. So it's the kind of thing you could wear to bed because it yeah. doesn't get up in your nose. It's not irritating. So mm -hmm. Torn by Henry Rose. That is number five. Okay, great. Uh, but you've helped me discover one that I've never heard of. So that's really good. That's that's the kind of thing I want. And uh, yeah, I quite like sometimes if it, if something smells really nice, I don't mind if it doesn't go on a big journey. It yeah. just smell really good. Like this. Sometimes uh, it's just mm, it's a cuddly night in, you know, <laughs> and that's yeah. okay. Yeah, and we're just come as it gets colder here. Certainly in the UK for autumn, we're coming into the perfect time for that kind of thing. Just a quick question on that, then: is is that uh, expensive to get? You've you've got a kind of a um, is that like a travel sure. size like, there? Or? This is a, this is an eau de parfum. Uh, I think these are these are about fifty bucks. It's not it's not expensive. Um, it's okay. very reasonable. I is think. I can't tell the size of that. I don't know if that's a tiny sample that no. you're holding up, or is it? How do you know how much is in there? Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not sure. I think it might be maybe fifty mil, maybe. Oh, it's quite a lot then. Okay, so you can see. Oh right, yeah, because when yeah. we did this, it could I couldn't tell if it's a little tiny. Yeah. Okay, and it comes in a roller style, right? Well, evidently, uh, they are discontinuing the roller ball. I don't know oh, if right. they have problems with it. But they're discontinuing the rollerball, so now you can get them for thirty-five bucks on the website right. right now. So okay, just, you know, all right. Well, people um, should so go. It'll and be check, a different form. People should check those guys out, and they so do they do sprays as well if you prefer. Then, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. I okay. think they might just be um, uh, just just dabbing the, on. Yeah, right. Um, okay, interesting. I did not know that Michelle Pfeiffer developed a yeah. fragrance line. Yes. Uh, great actress. And uh, yeah, I was revisiting a few clips from Scarface yes. only the other day where she, she had a, a torrid time with Al Pacino in that movie. But yeah, yeah great, yeah. great, a great, great actress. All right. That was her Love. first movie. Their first was movie it? ever was Scarface, yes. Uh -huh. I didn't know that. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's a great, great movie. And uh, yeah, what a great, great actress. Okay, lovely first choice. Thank you. What is your second pick, please? So second choice is the perennial favorite by Hermes. This is, this is uh, Eau d'Orange Vert, so green orange. It was uh, formulated in, back in 1979 originally uh, for men, but of course, as you know, most of the Hermes line is, could be worn by anyone. Um, mm -hmm. I find it very interesting how scents differ on a man and on a woman because of the body chemistry and also just person to person, how mm. one person can, can spritz something on and it can be dreadful <laughs> and then someone else it smells delicious on them. But yeah. uh, so uh, d'Orange Verte is, is one of those, um, crowd pleasers in the sense that it's, it's, there's again, nothing objectionable about this fragrance. There's, there's a blast of, of orange and lemon at the top. Uh, there's some mandarin, there's a hint of mint in there. There's some black currant. There's also some oak moss and patchouli, but I would be challenged to find it in here because it really is citrus dominant and mm. it doesn't last a long time. So some people might have an issue with that, but it's the kind of scent um, it's great for the office. Mm. Uh, it doesn't tickle the nose too much. Uh, it's kind of non-irritating. And it smells like very expensive Italian soap. That's kind of in my mind. I know it's a French fragrance, but it, it reminds me of Italian soap. It, it's just something very citrusy, very classic, um, subtly masculine, but of course a woman can wear it as well. Um, mm. So this is kind of a long-term, uh, you know, long-time favorite of mine. You do have to spritz quite a lot of it. Um, it is yeah. cheap, uh, so some people might say, "Well, why? Why am I buying? Why am I spending one hundred and fifty dollars on a bottle that is, 
not going to last forever. But you know what? I say if you like it, get it. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I do always say to people, you know, they don't worry too much of, okay, sometimes things are a little bit disappointing that they don't last or they're not that strong. But if you really like it, just, you know, you can spray more and it, it, it's fine. And those kind of fragrances, you know, it's, it's very, I think it was originally called uh, Cologne or so, Eau de Cologne of yes, Hermes yes. or something years ago. So mm -hmm. they're designed to have that, you know, that traditional Eau de Cologne vibrant refreshing thing but it, it's not really intended to last long and they, they're just right. some of my favorite ones like you say smelling like a really good soap i mean that can be a really good thing it's a good you know you don't necessarily want to be at work smelling yeah. of pungent musks and leathers and seducing everybody you just <laughs> yes. want to smell uh, clean and fresh yes. and it's, it's, it's so useful to have something like that to do with yet yeah, to do that with and it's, it's a unique it's they're all different these sips yeah. I've, I've got that and i really really it's a really really good yeah. fragrance yeah it gets you it gets you up and out the door this is a oh. it's a morning fragrance this is this is what i think of i'm getting ready for work i'm ready to go yeah and we all need a few fragrances like that i think absolutely yeah lovely choice and okay well so let's dive in i'm gonna quiz you a little bit more about your life in general in a Ooh. moment but let, let's go to number three let's go to number three next what's next okay so number three is a perennial favorite it was designed for a woman of course uh this is the classic chanel number five from chanel uh, this came out in 1921, and Coco Chanel had her perfumers wave handkerchiefs in front of her, and she picked the fifth one. That is, uh, that is how, um, how it came to be. And it is one of, um, I know that they were using aldehydes before this, but um, it, it used aldehydes to a perfection, to sort of mm. a heightened state. So you get that fizz from the top that, with the aldehydes, uh, you've also got on the top Ylang Ylang, Neroli, Leban, Bergamot, and also um, big floral heart. So it's a it's it's very it's a very feminine fragrance. Iris, jasmine, rose, orris root. So there's a powderiness to it, but it's not cloying. So there's a sweetness. Lily of the valley at the base. Civet or what they're using to replace civet because you know they're not squeezing civet cats anymore thank no. god i think that's a good thing uh yeah. there's a, there's an artificial civet note uh sandalwood musk oak moss vetiver amber vanilla and patchouli so it's very balsamic animalic woody at the base and it has a a lifespan um, it starts off with that with that beautiful floral that opens up, but then it dries down into this sort of delicious, warm vanilla, balsamy sort of thing. And it's one of the things where you want to just keep sniffing your wrist. It's one of those. Um, it, in fact, I would say that it's really at its best down at the down at the end. So most likely worn by a woman. Uh, the, yeah. the history behind this and why I have it in my collection, aside from mm. the fact that it is a classic. Um, probably the most worn women's fragrance in the world, it is said. Um, also, it was the signature scent of my grandmother and my mother. Oh, wow. And uh, so after she, my mom passed away last year, and uh, this, uh, I just, all I have to do is, you know, open it up, and uh, it's my mom. It's, it's a yeah. really remarkable. And we were talking earlier, of course, about the evocation of memories that yeah. sense memory that's activated by scent. So um, it comforts me to have it around, shall we say. But it's yeah, also like beautiful. Yeah, it's a stunning, I mean, it's, it's an absolutely magnificent creation. One of the all time classics. Is it, I, I think I recall hearing a story that uh, it was kind of almost created by accident. I, I could be wrong here, but somebody put too many aldehydes in by mistake that, or something. That was, that's correct. It was, Is well. That, that the one, yeah. Yeah, we're not we're not sure, Coco, but here, try this, you know, just in the oh, and then she fell in love with it. So yeah, it was wow. a happy accident. Yeah. So it, it brilliant how that happened. Yeah, and the, the whole aldehyde thing there, it's a really lovely kind of I always find it hard to sort of explain or understand what aldehydes mm -hmm. are, but I kind of get when I smell them and I really like them. And maybe that one anyone can wear everything, but that one does have a very feminine kind of aura. Yes, yeah. I, my mum actually used to have a, have a bottle of uh, the fragrance Coco by Chanel, yes. which I actually did uh, wear a few times. And I, it's I very kind of... spicy. It's, it's actually a really lovely scent. Yeah. 
I think uh, guys can maybe get away with that one. And, and of course, Chanel number five, if they really want. But most people, yeah, that, that is a, a what most people would regard as a really feminine, mm -hmm. in, a, in a good way, smell. So brilliant choice. Uh, so we've had three so far. Let, let's just get a little bit more about you then. So you, you're there in Los Angeles. There's a, you, I mean, I've, there's some lovely pictures on your Instagram that you've been <laughs> uh, horse riding recently. So yes. ap apart from the sort of great hub of movie making and uh, you know culture you've got some fantastic scenery around there so is, is that something you get to enjoy often yes absolutely on the weekends generally we and and this this um we, we've always been out and about on the weekends but especially during the lockdown time uh we would you know my, my partner was lucky in that he was working the whole time so right. that was a good thing and then on the weekends yeah. we would go usually drive to the coast spend some time on the beach um, and then on Sundays, we would head inland and go into the mountains. So there's a lot around LA, many different, mm. uh, uh, a lot of different topography. Um, and unfortunately, you have to go a long way in order to get to these places because it's, it's huge. The city of Los Angeles is 400 square miles. It's big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, so um, my, if I'm thinking you can just pop out the door and be in the mountains, it's, it's, it's not really like that. You have to go quite a long way, do you? It's probably about 45 minutes to an hour okay. to, um, oh, to get out not, there, yeah. Not, but, um, not, but Not too bad. For, I mean, to me, that's, you know, it looks pretty spectacular. And we, we've got mm -hmm. some nice countryside in England, but, you know, I, I can't go anywhere that spectacular without getting on an airplane. So I'm kind right. of envious, yeah. Yeah, no, we have beautiful coast, beautiful mountains, um, all of that. Um, there's a it's it's crowded here so you kind of do have to go farther afield if you want to you know avoid yeah. the crowds of people um mm -hmm. but other than that it does have a lot to offer okay well i hope i get to i've never actually been over to the other side of the pond at all so i do hope that i will one day have you ever been to our lovely little island here of, of uh, great I Britain? have three times in fact uh -huh. um really? london is one of my favorite cities in the world um i have not been there since 1984 but wow um, but long, you, wow it's a really long time but yeah. i've i've been there three times uh actually one time which was pretty special i took my mom around uh all the way up to york edinburgh um spent some time in in cambridge and in oxford of course london um i had another trip where i spent a lot of time in the west country which i love devon and cornwall dorset and then I found out later that I have ancestors who were gentlemen farmers in Dorset. So there was something that drew me to that, to that particular part of the world. When I went to the West Country, I didn't want to come back. I basically didn't, yeah. didn't even want to go back to London. I, I had fell in love with the cows, yeah. <laughs> and the hedgerows, and the, and the beautiful coastline, and the rolling hills, and the, and the coits, you know, the, the 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 uh, pre prehistoric barrows of ancient people yes. yeah, fantastic yeah. yeah beautiful yeah there's some great stuff down there but see yeah, i'm sure if you know if you ended up there you know on a miserable wet rainy night in january you, you might think well maybe los angeles does kind of edge it but yeah uh, i think you've made, so bad, made the but, right yeah yeah but it is uh, it is a magical place and i and i also have some family history in, in britain as well so there is an ancestral memory there um, for sure on my mom's yeah. side and um, yes so to answer your question yes indeed I have been to uh, the the British Isles and um, also fell in love with Scotland um, beautiful beautiful up there and um, I've got a few uh, I've got a few Brit friends so always good and I did grow up on way too much British television so you were commenting on the quality of my British accent and I can do different ones you know yes. that's why because I was exposed very early got it Okay, brilliant. Yeah, um, oh, yeah. Ju that just makes me wonder then, because one of the things you've put on your uh, Instagram description of yourself is voice enthusiast. What does that yes. mean? What does this mean? Well, it, it means I, I studied voice and um, it, mainly for speaking. Um, I, I have sung a little bit as well, but really my main thing is speaking. And so um, I did voice training very early on and I use it all the time. I'm, I'm using it right now. I use it on my podcast. I, you know, right, so yeah. I have I'm fascinated by the human voice, um, and right. I have a lot of friends who are singers as well. So, um, so they inspire me. Ah, interesting. So, when you say you're using it right now, like, could you, if if you wanted to, like, teach someone or help them, you could help them become better at talking. Maybe. I mean, I'm not. I'm not a. You know, I'm not an official voice coach, but I could yeah. certainly 
you know, give a little bit of, of, of coaching. Uh, one of the biggest things you can do is, yes. is relax the abdomen. That's the biggest uh -huh. thing. Also to remind yourself to breathe, keep your shoulders down and also create space in your mouth. And of course, um, as, and you probably know this, you know, you have little warm up exercises that you do, you know, like blowing the lips or <laughs> doing things like that. Right. I do that sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes Reading. I leave those in my videos, yeah, but it's, it's not with any <laughs> studied technique. But yeah, right. yeah. So, so for example, if someone was doing, let's say I was a, a new at YouTube and I was struggling and I was kind of finding that I did videos and I was just like, um, all the time and stuff like that, you, you could maybe help people with that kind of thing. To I think I YouTube could, yeah, bit. just some basic stuff. I mean, certainly pulling yourself into the moment and um and and remembering to breathe these are two of the most important things because i think a lot of people just get nervous and mm. when they get nervous they're they start to tense up their throat starts to constrict a bit yeah. they forget yeah. to breathe um and so just imagining yourself as being res uh resonant and round it's a really right. good really good image to have and also okay. having good posture these are very basic yeah. things Good. Yeah, I'm, I think I'm a bit of a natural sloucher, so I'll work on that one. And, everyone uh, is. Uh, yeah, everyone. Yeah. The default is this, you know. Yeah, but you got to get your shoulders back, and you right. you, you feel ten percent better already. It's and you, uh, it's interesting because I definitely learned just by doing the videos because you watch yourself mm -hmm. back and you notice the things that are not so good, and you, you do get a lot better at it. So it's definitely a skill you can learn. Yes. And even if you're not on YouTube, I think it can help you just in your daily life, I'm sure. So, yeah, really, I'm always in, uh, interested about this kind of stuff. So, great. Okay, brilliant. Um, you've given us three lovely choices so far. What Am I right there? What's number yes. four, please? Yeah. All right. So, number four is something well-known to your good self. Um, well. It is a recent acquisition for me. I am a fan of the house Acqua di Parma, one of the great Italian houses, of course. And uh, something, a little number from their Blue Mediterraneo line, it is Fico di Amalfi. And I know that this is one of your favorites. Um, this is uh, a big fig. It is bigger than any actual fig in existence. <laughs> um, yeah. As you know, there is no essence of fig. You can't, it's not like you can squeeze a fig and, 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 and get this juice out of it. Um, there's a top of grapefruit, bergamot, citron, lemon. There's fig, jasmine, and pink pepper. So there's a little bit of floral. There's a little spiciness, a little hint of that pepper in there bringing out the fig, which is a uh, an artificial accord, actually, that, that fig. You know what? I didn't know that, but I've learned that today. Thank you. Well, you're welcome. And then at the base, you've got fig tree, cedar, and benzoin. So there's a little bit of a resininess. Um, it's subtle. It really is a big, juicy fig. It, it is a vacation in a bottle. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I would say um, I, I spent a bit of time in, in Cyprus, um, well known to you Brits, and uh, in the Mediterranean. And it reminds me, if, if, there, if, if I were surrounded by fig trees, and had figs on a plate in front of me in Cyprus, it would be this, um, yeah. overlooking the Mediterranean on a warm summer day, sitting under a grape arbor, surrounded by fig trees, it might very well be this. Yeah. You know, so I, I full heartedly recommend this, I mean, for any time of year, but especially for the summer and the spring, yeah. um, just, it's just delicious. It's just, um, it's just, it, I would say it's a little bit gourmandish, you know, but uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a beautiful fresh scent. Juicy. Yeah. Juicy is a good word. Yeah. yeah. I think it's, it's yeah, yeah the, the holiday in a bottle type thing, mm -hmm. it may be a cliche, but it, it really is appropriate for that fragrance. That's like my, it's the first day of the holiday and I'm wearing yeah. a, a, a tasteless Hawaiian shirt that I wouldn't really normally wear. And I really yeah. want to emphasize that feeling of being relaxed and happy and it's sunny and it's just so bright. And it's it's unique because you get so many nice citrus, but that fig thing is, is mm -hmm. still very citrusy too, but with the fig, it's really good. And some of the other really nice, interesting niche kind of fig scents out there are a bit more creamy and and sweet mm -hmm. but this is so it stays fresh and yet almost it does. At the same. it's so clever and, and so it does beautiful. have an arc it does have an arc because it does mm. take you down to that kind of cedary barky benzoiny thing at the end mm. uh, which just means you have to spray on some more you know <laughs> it's just yeah. it's delicious. I, I love it and and yeah. as i said before i kind of generally hate commercial fragrances i'm not yeah. a fan so 
it's really got to be good. Um, and also I have kind of a sensitive nose, so I tend to sneeze at a lot of stuff. So oh, right. all of these are things that if you get a little sneezy around fragrances, chances are these are going to be probably safe bets. Okay, great. Yeah, I, they don't seem to get the, the respect that some other houses do, Aqua de Palma. It's, it, I don't see a lot of the real hardcore aficionados. They're, they're seen as kind of it's kind of really like a designer house, really. But yeah, really really under the radar house in a way for, for, for some people, I think. that you, and, and you can get them here in the UK. They're, they're quite affordable, but I think they're a little bit more over in the States. But yeah, yeah, yes. if, guys, if you haven't uh, checked that house out, it could be a great place to start with niche fragrances if, if you want something that you, anyone can enjoy you don't have to be used to weird smells but they're a different a little bit different level to your designer fair so brilliant they are yeah. and i have to i have another thing to say about uh the house of acro de parma which is um so they started in 1919 and they mm. placed their fragrances and we talked about this before mm. they placed their fragrances in tailor shops so when you get mm. your Folk Italian suit, and you have your handkerchief ch ch spritz yep. with some Aqua di Parma Colonia, which was their original scent. Which also, by the way, I don't know if you know that uh, Colonia, the original formulation, was a big Hollywood thing back in the day, and it was uh, uh, um, Audrey Hepburn, Cary Grant, and such yes. folks uh, oh, had I have it. Heard. As yep, scent. yep, yeah. And I think in those days, you pretty much had to go to Italy to get it. It wasn't like was it was it. in you know, your department stores. It was it was really a privately owned small little thing. So yeah, yes. that, it was it was these kind of uh, great movie stars making those films over there that, that that discovered it. Yeah, yeah. That was that was sort of the cachet about yes. it is that you couldn't just order it online <laughs> in the states or even in the UK. You had to go there. So when when Audrey Hepburn was filming uh, Roman Holiday. That was her first introduction to Italy and mm. probably where she found it. Um, but yes, um, Aqua di Parma, classic. Yeah, love it. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, almost kind of, uh, I know, although it's great, we can get everything everywhere now. You can't, it, there was almost something a bit more romantic about the era when you could only get a certain product if you'd been there. Yeah. Or, you, know, you could only get some Italian wine if you went to Italy and mm -hmm. all that. So I love some of the things about globalization, but there, there's something kind of nostalgic and nice about that idea. I really like it. So, darling, one thing's just come to my mind now. Um, is there any chance you might do it? You might start a YouTube fragrance channel because it seems like you're well, pretty. I think you can pretty much <laughs> give a lot of people a run for their money. You seem pretty good at this. Well, have you thought you. about doing it? Have you considered it? You know, I, I haven't really. I actually on on Instagram, if you if you scrolled a little bit earlier, I did do some. I just some written reviews and you know with hmm. pictures, but I didn't do a video. But you know, maybe it'll be something I put on my uh, my YouTube channel. I have a Zen Body Living YouTube channel, by the way. Um, right. that I'm going to be populating with stuff as I as I create them. But thank okay, you, That's a great idea. I'll link that. Yeah, yeah. I think a YouTube, you know, a fragrance YouTube thing for you. Yeah, I'm sure you have got a lot of other things going on. But yeah, I think if you, you know, even if you just did it like you're doing now, just turn on the camera and put this kind of, you know, I think it could be great. Okay. Yeah. Especially yeah, with your background, it could really work. You know, you already know how to, to talk and present. So, and you, you seem to understand about, you know, getting the notes down and <laughs> giving us that info. I like it. Guys, yeah. let us know in the comments. Yeah. Let, let us know in the comments if you demand it, maybe she'll be pressured to do it. He's woken up, hasn't he? He seems to be uh, in the, uh, the in his, doing his toilet. Yeah, I, I saw him do a big yawn. Uh, he sort of, his ears twitched in a slightly annoyed way that there was this talking, and now he's yeah he's get, getting the uh, ingesting his daily dose of fur as they yes. they all do. But he looks like a cute a cute cat. Yeah. How yes, old is uh, it's Jack, isn't it? Jack Jack is uh, he's nine years old. We think um, he's right. oh, look, he's turning his back now. He he yeah. is the Cary Grant of cats. He's uh, he's very. He's very funny. He likes to amuse. He's very cuddly. He's very friendly, kind yeah. of like a dog. Likes to roll upside down and get his belly rubbed, which is kind of unusual for a cat. Mm. Um, but he's a character. Yeah, he brings a lot of joy. He looks smart with. It. He's got his kind of uh, natural tuxedo. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> Lovely. Okay. And yeah, nine eyes. Oh, he's pretty much in the prime of life for a cat then. Absolutely perfect. Right, absolutely. Uh, and if, if I could just shake myself and go Brr, and suddenly be as beautiful as him, uh, you know, life would be complete. Um, you know, cats are just sort of, they're, 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 they're almost uh, perfectly made. You know, they yes. always feel like they belong exactly where they are. They can make a window ledge look comfortable, you know, just yeah. how they 
how they exude their level of comfort, you know? <laughs> yeah, they've got that kind of the art of good living and, and being kind of relaxed down. Yeah. They seem to, the whole breed seems to just have this kind of natural uh, coolness about them. He's I, a, I kind of, yeah. He's a bon vivore. <laughs> they are, they are they are just natural bon vivers. Yeah, I love I do like cats. I, I do I, I'd like to have a pet, but I'm um, I'm just put off by the I'm I'm so lazy and uh, it's such a commitment to phobe that I, I'm put off by the you know having to sort something out if I go on holiday or take it to the vets and all this. But in, in terms of just having one in the house to, to be around, I'd love it. But I'm I'm a bit too selfish to actually do it yet. But yeah, maybe I'll. Uh, yeah, maybe part of my my uh, coaching myself to be a better ho person and uh, mindful. You know, maybe I'll get there. That, it could be a good sign if I get a pet. It could be a breakthrough. Anyway, a cat it, would it, be ideal for you, actually. Yeah, you, know, you might it, be surprised. It may help me with some of my many deep seated psychological <laughs> issues, Dana. But let's not get onto that right now. Let's move on. We have one fragrance I think left. So what's Indeed. number five, please? What's number five? Okay, number five is the heavy hitter. Another classic. Another classic for women. Duh. Here we go. It is Shalimar. Shalimar came out in 1925. It was considered very risque at the time because at the time. The standard thing was the flower bomb, you know, lavender, you know, friendly scents. And this was created by Jacques Guerlain for his mistress. Um, and, and of course, uh, uh, it, it was said that, that there was sort of a, a whiff of his mistress's undercarriage, shall we say. This is to quote uh, the guys, the wafts from the loft guys. That's, that's what I think it was Joe or Dan who, who mentioned that, which made me laugh. But um, Shalimar, sometimes these days it gets a bit of a bad rap because people say, oh, it's you know, an old lady's scent. It's not at all. It was, it was very modern at the time. Again, very, very scandalous in its day. Um, the top notes, berg uh, bergamot, orange, lemon, cedar, mandarin, orange, iris, rose, jasmine, patchouli, and vetiver in the middle. Uh, so there's a big floral heart and some powderiness with that iris, which can be cloying in less skilled hands, I have to say. But this um, really exquisitely well done. Then the base, there's a lot down. It's all about the base here. Vanilla, tonka bean, amber, a pop, uh, what is it? A pop and ax, yeah, yeah. balsam, incense, leather, sandalwood, uh, civet or the artificial civet and musk. Okay. And when I first got this, I, I know I had smelled it before when I was a kid. And there was so, there were some things I liked about it, some things I didn't. I thought it was a little much. So I did a blind buy recently and uh, just wanted to be brave, have it in the collection, right? Um, so when it came, I opened it up and I smelled what almost smelled like kerosene to me. And I thought, oh boy, oh no, this is, you know, this is not going to be good. It's, it, it hits you with smoke and leather that's what you get first you don't you don't get the um you know you, you don't get the um the sparkly bits the 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 citrus or the rose right off you get you get knocked over the head with a base but what happens with this is it will evolve and it will get uh warmer and larger and softer and more floral in the middle and then so this one has an arc this 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 is an epic one for having a having a life cycle on your skin um yeah. it really hangs around a long time it's very balsamic um meaning uh the the sort of uh balsamy well peru balsam is in there mm -hmm. sandalwood very woody the the animalic so it's balsamic animalic floral um really a, a master stroke of a of a performer as well um and the dry down there's a lot of vanilla because those base notes hang around and it's just kind of, um, I, and I think it really depends on your on your body chemistry because I think probably this might on some people, it might stink on some yeah. people. On some people, it just it just gets yummier as it dries down. Yeah. So Shalimar, this is the, uh, actually the Eau de Toilette, um, which is more than enough, actually. I, mm -hmm. I, I might be afraid to try the Eau de Parfum, certainly, or the Parfum, because that's the highest concentration. Might be too much these yeah. days, but this is highly wearable. A man could certainly wear this. Again, very smoky, leathery. Mm. Um, 
there's sometimes there are comparisons to Abbe Rouge, which is also another Guerlain masterpiece. Big um, fan of that one here. Yeah, I might have it. Yeah. Um, Keith Richards' signature scent. Yes, amazing stuff. Yeah. And there's yep, a lot of it. floral in there. That's the the thing that's amazing oh, yeah. about that. There's a lot of yeah. floral, and it seems kind of there's a big rose note and carnation in there. Very, yeah, it's it's rather sort of florid and uh, very dandyish kind of. It doesn't, doesn't really fit, does it, with your image of Keith Richards? But it's a great smell. It's a great yeah. smell. Yeah. But it came uh, out. That came out in '65, and of course, that's mm. when, you know the rock stars are hitting it big in the mid '60s, right? So that it may have just been a very famous fragrance that is like, oh, sure that, and you know. <laughs> <laughs> That was a brilliant <laughs> Spinal Tap esque uh, English accent <laughs> there. I, 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 I thought even I could see Nigel Tufnell there when he said. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think I might like. I might like to work in a shop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what he might do if he did. Yeah. Oh, sorry, uh, sir. We we don't have those shoes in, in that size, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, it just turned into a green globule. I don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the drama. Yeah, a bizarre gardening accident. Yeah. I love, I love, we love Spinal Tap. It is one yes. of the greatest. We're also huge Monty Python fans, of course. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, Holy Grail and Life of Brian and all of that. Um, yep. so we like to we like to talk in accents around here quite a bit. Um, but yep. yeah, this is the this is my number one simply because it is so epic. Um, it has kind of become my signature scent. Um, right. Oh, that would be. Yeah, maybe a contender for your, your top, you know, your signature. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, oh, this yeah. and uh, and I like to I like to waft around in my uh, in my Fico de Melfi as well. Uh, so that's a good go to. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My top two at the moment, and okay. probably will continue to be. Great and uh, yeah, and I love the old the, the beautiful old bottle design of that Galan is is so iconic and, and fab. I love those old style bottle designs and Galan. You know, it's just such a great house. Everything they do seems to be really good. Um, you maybe want to go and because there's a few of the the old B-shaped type bottles I've got. Yeah. I've got de Michaud, which again mm -hmm. has that. It's almost like God. It's a bit funky and weird and musky yeah. and I don't know. Maybe if I spray too much, it could be a bit gross. But you know, it's it's essential, gnarly kind of stuff, and it's it's sexy and that uh, that goes back years and years. I, I did want some um, spray jicky quite a lot on, mm -hmm. on some bit of my skin, and it did it kind of got a bit of a baby's nappy type vibe after a while. So <laughs> but I, off I, a <laughs> yeah, I kind of put me off, but I think it's because I over, I oversprayed it. But um, yeah, they, I like these kind of challenging older ones that they've got still in their repertoire. And it, it's a really absolutely amazing fragrance house. And again, you can, you can pick those up without breaking the bank, but they're, they're just as interesting as, as some of your niche fancy absolutely. Pants stuff. And, yeah. And I have to say, speaking of uh, the Rolling Stones, um, uh, so Jade, I believe it's Jade Jagger, who is the daughter of Mick. Um, mm -hmm. She did a redesign on the uh, Shalimar bottle. So this is this is actually a redesign. This is a modern take on the original flacon that they used to have. Oh, uh, so what she she de she designed that yes. or redesigned? Oh, yes. I didn't know she was. Well, she's involved in Mick Jagger's yeah. daughter designs fragrance bottles. Oh uh, well, she she's a designer in general, so I don't think she normally. I, sh does I should that. know that. Sorry, yeah. I didn't know <laughs> oh my god, Dan, <laughs> get with it. <laughs> I'm not quite as cultured as I pretend. Yes, sorry. <laughs> It, yeah okay i should have known that oh brilliant okay lovely well she did a great job it looks really fantastic and that was that was a superb uh, choice to finish up with uh, i could talk to you for a long time about a load of other stuff and uh, maybe we'll do that in another episode if i can if i can force you to do it because i I, yeah. I don't mind talking about non-frag stuff on the channel sometimes you know I'm, I'm trying to branch out and uh so it would be a real honor maybe to get you back on for something else or maybe some more frag stuff but, but yeah let us know what you thought of the picks in the comments down below and guys i definitely think there's a strong case that Dana needs to do more uh, fragrance related videos, whether it's on her existing channel, uh, no pressure from us, but you know, I, I reckon you could uh, you could have a really great channel with with your skills Thank here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. And lastly, it looks like a rather, uh, it looks like a, I'm guessing that's not a super modern building. I'm just guessing. Is, is that kind of a nice historic building you're living we in there? We live in a 1930 building in LA it's a town, yes. Hmm. And it's one of those places where it's got some of these lovely period details, like a like a vanity with with built in shelves and cupboards and whatnot around. Hmm. Um, it's it's uh, she's she's kind of like 
an art deco ship. That's sort of what she looks like from the outside. And she's very elegant. She, she's definitely a she, this building. Okay. Um, and we know that she behaves well in an earthquake because we had one a couple of years ago. Yeah. And uh, oh, she wow. didn't do the shimmy. Um, but yeah. we lost nothing off the shelves. Oh, brilliant. She didn't fall down. <laughs> oh, I'm glad to hear it. No, it looks, it looks like a yeah. really character. Just for a little glimpse I can see, looks like a very yeah. nice character for it's old building. Place. And it's, I'm glad it can survive one of the one of the few negatives of, of life out there, which is occasional. Yeah, fires and earthquakes is what we have. Yes. Okay. Maybe maybe my mundane life in England has its advantages. Then we don't get too many extremes. Uh, Dana, it's been an absolute pleasure to to have you on the show here, and I hope viewers have enjoyed that. I'll wrap things up there. Links to all the other stuff that Dana does are down there, and I they all, I will either have already shown the podcast that I did with you, which we have a video of, or it might be coming out after this video. Not sure yet, but look out for that. Okay. I'll leave it there, guys. Thanks ever so much for joining us. We'll see you Thank very you, soon. Thank you. And bye-bye. Guys, whatever you're doing in life, remember, let's project. And sometimes life may stink, but we can always smell good. Bye-bye. Bon Viveur by Nottel and Wilson, because life is meant to be enjoyed.